Hello. In this video, we're going to introduce one of the main theorems of the semester, a key theorem of complex analysis called the cauchy gorsoff theorem. Now, the theorem simply says this. Suppose that a function f is analytic in a simply connected domain d. Then for every simple closed contour c in d, the integral of f of z along the contour c will equal 0. Now, We'll try to make sense of this theorem and see it illustrated in a bit, but first we need to define what we mean by a simply connected domain. You'll recall that a domain is simply an open set that is connected, and when we first defined this, we took the notion of connected to mean that any two points in that set can be joined by a finite sequence of line segments. Now, a simply connected domain D is a domain that has this property. Every simple closed contour in D such as this one, can be shrunk continuously down. We can just sort of push that together, shrink it down to a single point without ever at any point having those contours leave the set D. Now, what would prevent you from being able to do that shrinking process? Well, maybe your contour D includes some points that are not part of the set. Uh, so for instance, let's say you had a contour in D, um, but D also has a hole and your contour sort of closes that hole. Now if that were the case, then if you were to try and shrink that contour down to a single point, eventually part of your contour is going to have to cross into this region that doesn't belong to D. So a simply connected region just does not have any holes in it. If we have a, a small number of holes, we'll sometimes refer to a region as doubly connected if there's one hole, or triply connected if there are two holes, and, and so on. All right, so let's uh, see this in action. We're going to use more commonly a, a version of the cauchy gorsoff theorem which can be said this way. If f is analytic everywhere within and on a contour c, and c is a simple closed contour, then the integral of f of z along the contour c is equal to zero. You'll notice that this version kind of ignores this part about the simply connected uh, domain, but it it is sort of included in there when we require that the function is everywhere analytic within and on c. So we're not necessarily looking at the larger set. We're just looking at what happens in this area. But that's all you really need to look at. So here are a couple of quick examples. Let's say that C was the circle uh, with radius 1 centered at the origin. And F was this function. Now this function does not look very nice as far as parameterizing and taking in a, the integral uh, would go. But the cauchy gorsoff theorem says we don't need to. We can just take a look to see if this function is analytic inside and on the curve. Now the function is going to be analytic everywhere except at the point z equals negative 4 thirds. However, the point z equals negative 4 thirds lies outside the circle with radius 1 centered at the origin. And so everywhere in and on that circle, this function is analytic. And therefore, the theorem says that the value of the integral will be 0. Now, this will also help um, if we have a, not only when we have functions that are hard to integrate, but when we have really crazy contours. So let's just say, for instance, that this was the contour I wanted to uh, integrate along. I haven't actually told you where it's located in the complex plane, but it turns out not to matter. If I want to integrate this function along this contour, I know that this function is entire, it's analytic everywhere, and this is a simple closed curve, and so the cauchy gorsoff theorem simply says that the value of the integral will equal zero. All right, so this is a very powerful theorem. Now to see one uh, place where it doesn't work, let's take a look at one of the problems from your worksheet last time. Uh, you were asked to find the value of the integral of 1 over z, where you were integrating along the, the contour, which is the unit circle with radius 1 centered at the origin. Now, um, what you can do using our techniques from last time we can parameterize the unit circle as z of t equals e to the i t and let uh, t run from 0 to 2 pi. Now if we do that and we replace uh, the parameterization in for z and we replace z prime of t dt in for dz, you'll see that the e to the i t's cancel. We'll just be integrating the constant i from 0 to 2 pi and that gives us a value of 2 pi i. Now this is an integral along a closed curve and the value is not 0. Now the reason why the cauchy gorsoff theorem is not contradicted here is because of that condition. The function needs to be analytic everywhere inside and on the curve. 
Now 1 over z is analytic everywhere except at the origin, but since the origin is enclosed by the curve c, the cauchy gorshaw theorem doesn't apply, and actually the uh, conclusion uh, doesn't hold. You get 2 pi instead of 0. So please remember, uh, you need to check that the function be analytic and inside, inside and on the contour in order to apply the, the cauchy gorshaw theorem. Okay, with that caveat in mind though, let's take a look at another problem from last time's worksheet. Here we wanted to compute the integral of around c of z e to the z, where c was the square and the vertices were at 0, 1, 1 plus i, and i. Now with the tools that we had available to us on last time's worksheet, we would take the square and we would uh, break up the sides, uh, give, find the value of the integral along each side. Now you'd have to uh, you know, parameterize, um, you would possibly use an integration by parts on each of these parts. You'd come up with these values after a lot of uh, uh, tedious work. You would add them all together and you would come up with the value of zero. Now zero is the value of the integral, but we can now say this uh, immediately just using the cauchy gorshaw theorem. We would notice that the function z e to the z is an entire function. It's analytic everywhere. c is a simple closed curve and Applying the cauchy gorshaw theorem, that's all you need to say. The uh, value of the integral will, will be zero. So this is a, a pretty important uh, theorem. In the videos that follow, we're going to talk about some consequences of the cauchy gorshaw theorem uh, that will be quite useful to us in the future.